Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussion on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, currently featuring Steven Universe, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and Samurai Jack, among others. I'm Justin Cummings, and today I'm joined by the returning Michelle Anderer. <laughs> Hello. It's been three weeks since we last yeah. spoke. Yeah. Uh, time. For those of you who don't know, Michelle has been off on a globe-trotting adventure <laughs> um, of epic proportions. We were supposed to, we were going to have her replaced two weeks ago for one episode, but then the episode got pushed back to last week, and she was still gone. Yes. So then we had frequent commenter Steve join us, and now the original team back together once more. Justin and Michelle, are you ready for this? Oh man, yeah, I'm I'm ready. Today, Michelle and I will be discussing episode 5 of the new season of Samurai Jack. This is chapter 96. Uh, you can find our previous podcast about this season of Samurai Jack at overlyanimated.com or by searching Overly Animated on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. And fun fact, Michelle, oh, we now okay. have a show-specific iTunes feed for Samurai Jack. Oh, awesome! That is nice to know. Yeah, actually. yeah, we got one of those now, so you can either follow the main overly animated uh, iTunes, or there is now one just for our Samurai yeah, Jack podcast. Yeah, you can just follow ours and be one of the cool kids. <laughs> no, well, kids are equally cool. It's well, okay. this is great because this is like <laughs> this is the first time we've gotten our own feed. Uh huh. No, We're not really just cool. like supplemental material on the main show. We're our own feed. We have our <laughs> own iTunes podcast that is We're nothing but out, us. Man. Yes. I'm so happy about this. So, we are talking about the episode, Chapter 96, and to start this episode off, we got the return of a fan favorite, the Scotsman came back. How do you- wait, did, you didn't see the original show, though. How do you know he's a fan favorite? Because this is one of the few episodes I have seen, because this is one of those episodes that everyone remembers and loved of the original series. Oh. It was basically just a 20-minute duel between Jack and the Scotsman, and it was incredible. <laughs> and then they became bros after they stopped fighting? Basically. And so oh the Scotsman, God, he was a one-off character, uh, cult hit, and I guess what happened was Gendy realized how much people love the Scotsman, so uh-huh. when it came time to plotting out season five, he's like, you know what? Let's bring back the Scotsman. So if you hadn't seen the original episode of the Scotsman, I went back and rewatched it, if you hadn't seen the original episode, the first five or so minutes of this episode may have been kind of out of left field for you. What did you think, Michelle, of, like, the first five minutes? I mean, I didn't know who the Scotsman was, but I was, like, into <coughs> it, because so I was like, oh, like, look at this army. Oh, look at all these Scottish ladies. Oh, they're all his daughters. This is awesome. Like, I was into it without knowing that he was a returning character. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a cool scene of like the armies yeah. all riding up, and you've got the uh, the Scottish women army. It's like Merida from Brave is leading a charge. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously, it, it's wonderful. And then I was loving that so much. I was like, oh, cool. We got armies. We got another army. We got these Scottish ladies. And then older Scotsman rolls up. Yeah, I was like, who's this dude? See, your reaction was, who's this dude? And I'm sitting here, holy crap! Are you serious? I'm screaming at my roommate, Tim, the Scotsman's back! The Scotsman's back! Holy crap! Dustin, this is what kind of confused... So, like, he was in, like, one episode of a show that ran for four seasons, and they bring him back. Was he, like, really the most popular, like, side character? Because, He's, like... He was. Who else they gonna bring back? He I was mean, kind of a legend. Like, he was kind show. of a legend. Like, really? That wow. episode is remembered okay. as one of the best episodes of Samurai Jack. When, what was it about it? What's so great about Scotsman? It's, it's so hard to describe unless you watch the original episode. It's just, there's... <laughs> It feels so self-contained and so well executed. Okay. It's just such a good episode. I I cannot recommend it enough. It, even if you don't go back and watch all of Samurai Jack, watch The Scotsman. A, so this episode makes a bit more sense, and B, as a service to yourself. <laughs> as a service to yourself. You need to okay. see this episode. It's just it's incredible. I'll watch it. I'm convinced. So, the first five minutes definitely were a bit different from the rest. We got some more Aku. We got, um, we got the death of the Scotsman, sort of. What did yeah, you, I mean... <laughs> what did you think like, of the death of the Scotsman? It was so pointless. It kind of felt, honestly, like, 
like the show is like, yeah, he's like hella old now, but like we don't want to deal with him being old if he's gonna come back. So let's just kill him so we can have the younger, fun version of him. Like it kind of felt that way a little bit. Also, Aku straight up like, you know, murdering people as like essentially a bowling ball style execution was like kind of chilling in a way. Even though like I know we don't take him very seriously as like a villain. That was, like, pretty impressive. Yeah, that's the weird thing about Aku, is he's so humorous, yeah. and it's hard to take him seriously. He's, like, really good he's, at actually being awful. He's yeah. He's so evil. He's, the, yeah. the role of the show is he's he literally the embodiment. Evil. He's the physical embodiment of evil. This is, like, so hard to wrap my head around, because he's, like, so, like, whatever as a personality. But, like, yeah, obviously, like, when he has to do something, he's <sighs> really good at being like literally the worst so it's like it's an interesting package of a person it, it's so that hard they've made. it's so hard to explain the appeal of aku to someone who's never seen samurai jack yeah. because if i'm like he's the ultimate evil but he's also funny but he's really scary but he's really cartoony you're gonna be like that sounds like a terrible match he but it works it well, though yeah seriously and, like how bored he is after he murders like everyone but like the scottish ladies it's just like man <coughs> I think, that, I think that line, I was hoping for total annihilation, was just... Oh, yeah. But then he got distracted when the Scotsman brought up um, the, Samurai Jack. So then he just, like, left, thankfully, and the daughters the, didn't get murdered, the too. The death of the Scotsman, that, uh... It's like, was that, like, just laser death? Like... Yes. Out of his eyes? Yeah. Because you're like, that was pointless, and I'm like, No! Well, <laughs> have like two seconds to be sad and then he comes back and he's like really chill and a ghost he's like oh hey like okay we're gonna go back and regroup like la 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 like they don't treat it like a big deal either so it's hard to feel sad about it when it first happened though i'm like they brought back one of the most beloved side characters in animation (laughs) history for this (laughs) at least he has like quite the lineage you know to remember him by Put simply it would be like if waddles came back in gravity falls and became a pork chop that is what this was this was just a smack in the face and then we're they fixed it more of him though i bet yeah, yeah they fixed it really quickly i'm and i like that we're this reminds me a lot of what we're getting right now in steven universe it's like are we building a rebellion Oh, and which continues my never-ending narrative of the Jack Stephen parallel, which I will do an article what? on at some point. Wait, when did this become a parallel of kind of these two opposite ideals? They're like separate. They they've taken very different paths, but they're two of the strongest male protagonists on TV right now, as oh. far as animation goes. Mm. And just okay. chronicling how they deal with like, um trauma differently like how steven had a lot of time the process the whole rose shattering pink diamond thing he dealt with all the big stuff then later when they were back at beach city he started to kind of try to process that with like storm in the room and all that jack when he first killed a human a few episodes ago he had to process that quick and keep going because he was still in the middle of a fight that's the thing that really kind of confuse me about episode four though like because like he goes through so like he murders like six people and then he decides no no i can't murder the seventh one and then he like tries so hard to keep her alive and then it finally becomes like okay but like are we just not gonna address the fact that he murdered six people like he goes through like a second kind of like crisis about like oh like when the birds are talking to him like you're a murderer and he's like no no i'm not it's like but yeah you are dude it's, it's kind of this six people it's kind of this interesting back and forth of he has never actually killed a human until this season and so mm-hmm. that's a traumatic thing like we haven't even fully explored with steven the implications of shadow of not shattering but bubbling bismuth. Yeah. And so I think this is, this is a similar thing. It's like, this is a huge turning point in Jack's character because for four seasons, his whole mantra was, I don't kill humans. And now we're seeing him have to address what happens when he does. And so, yeah, he's not going to just make up his mind and stick to it. He's going to have these conflicting ideas in his mind where one day he might be like, no, they chose their fate. This is what is going to happen. And then the next day, he might be thinking, no, because I exist to fight Aku, they were created. They never had a choice. And so he's going back and forth. He's having this crisis. 
He's Do you breaking think he's down. Going back and forth. You think he's going to go back to murdering people again? Because it seems like he might be done with that for the rest of the season. I don't, I don't know. know, but I think his opinion on what he did is going to keep changing. Okay. His opinion I'll, on what I'll he does, I think, will stay. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. And I think what we saw in this episode with the fact that they were kids, it's kind of like the Daughters mm-hmm. of Aku thing to the next level. Because with the Daughters of Aku, these were at least, they at least looked late teens, early adult, you know, they looked mature at least. Yeah. And so it's, well, they're adults, they've chosen their path. And then he even questioned that of, well, no, they were raised from infancy to fight me, so did they choose their path? Well, it's like a different kind of brainwashing, like, um, the robot dude, who's like a human in a robot suit, he has a whole, like, monologue about, like, oh, like, kids are so easy to manipulate, like, la la la. You just like, put a, uh, yeah. a chip in their neck and tune the frequency, mm-hmm. which, that was, that line was almost a throwaway, but was really, really disturbing. Yeah. Because, like, look at how many kids there were and how many of them got surgical chips planted in their neck. Just uh, the way they acted under the influence of that frequency was, like, so uncomfortable. And I think this kind of, this was the next test for Jack. It's like, okay, well, you were okay killing those humans. Well, now they're kids. And so it's not just an innocent, now it's a kid. And so it's kind of... We're seeing Jack kind of make a stand of, I post my morals here, I'm not pushing it further. And then when he thought he killed them, he completely broke down, and he, we'll, we'll get to whatever the heck happened with the knight, mm-hmm. finally, finally, at the end, but, uh, Yeah, what? <laughs> what the heck, seriously? Uh, it's time! Well, okay! <laughs> I will take full advantage of the higher rating that this podcast gets, and say, what the hell? Is the knight not a flashback? Where the hell did he come from? Who the hell is he? Why the hell is he here? And what the <laughs> hell is going on? He could totally be a, pro- a projection. I mean, Jack's pretty cracked. <laughs> He's seen all kinds of things. This guy He's a nut. <laughs> he is a nut. And we will get to our weekly update on the mysterious hooded knight on a horse. Or horned knight on a horse. Because it's a big one. There, something probably, actually happened. Uh, I kept thinking maybe it was Jack in a weird alternate persona, but now I'm thinking that's probably not. I, he's got to be somebody important, though. I think this is Who's going to reveal himself and be like, blah, 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 here's like an important lesson, blah, blah, blah. But like in a cool way. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Blah, 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 yeah. lesson, blah, 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 moral, blah, 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 super weapon. <laughs> In this interesting way, with this reveal of some kind, yeah. I don't know why he's, like, so mysterious, but there has to be a reason for it, right? Yeah, there's gotta be something more to him. I'm very excited, though, with what we're getting with Ashi now. Yeah, she's gonna be on her own, it looks like. And she's going crazy, too! Yeah, what makes you think she's going crazy? The the mom and the moon! Oh, God! (laughs) forgot about that everyone's crazy everyone to have these weird like conversations moral conversations with like people that aren't actually there (laughs) it's happening all over the place yeah it definitely seems like this show is really testing the boundaries of portraying psyche on animation like they're 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 doing it they're uh they're finding every way they can and it's it's good. I'm really enjoying what this show is doing. This episode, to me, felt maybe the weakest of the season. No, I I think the fourth was the weakest, honestly. <sighs> I really enjoyed the fourth. Uh, I liked the I humor. Know. I I just, I don't, I don't know. I feel like the, the I guess my issue with the fourth, the big issue, is that, um, Ashi, like, the way... The, the way they're portraying Jack the whole episode was like, wow, like, he's such a good guy for, like, not killing Ashi. Like, oh, I really hope she comes around. And, like, the way she sees him when she does, like, switch her perspective after one ladybug incident. I mean, that's another thing. Like, she spent her whole life in a situation where she was totally brainwashed into thinking something. And it took him not killing one ladybug for her to just change her mind about her whole life? No, it took her one, it took one ladybug for her to not kill him that moment. That moment? It took one ladybug to make her pause. It took all of this episode and seeing the city and seeing the tree and all that jazz for her to then really change her mind. She was, it took the ladybug to make her pause. It took everything we saw this episode to change her mind. 
Hmm. Okay. That's, that's my, my argument. Yeah. I also just wish they addressed the fact that he killed like her six siblings or whatever at some point. Cause I feel I like that. I mean, they that did kind of come at him with deadly weapons. Kill- yeah, I mean, but then again, we're, like we were saying, like his perspective switching up, like they chose their path to like, well, actually, like they didn't really have much of a choice because they were raised for this and didn't know any other way to live. So I just hope I hope they address it because if they don't, it's really going to bug me. Uh, yeah, I can I can see that being a bugging situation. I'm a bugging situation, a bugging situation. So other things we need to address in this episode. What uh, we have an email. Do you want to read that now and then sure. continue? Yeah. All right. So our email comes to us from frequent commenter Steve, and I we might have to have a new name for him: occasional podcaster Steve. Occasional, <laughs> which sounds better: occasional podcaster, or frequent commenter. Frequent com. Hi, I'm Steve. Frequent commenter, occasional podcaster. Okay, you just say the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. No, we 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 love Steve. It was good to have him on. Filled in a pinch. Answered last minute. It was like two hours before we recorded. Oh my god. Came in clutch. <laughs> Um, wow. So here's our email. Hi, Justin and Michelle, question mark. If you are back, <laughs> Michelle, great to have you back. Hope you enjoyed your vacation. Anywho, this was a great episode. After I said last week was hilarious, this one was really dark. Though the Scotsman did give me some laughs. Speaking of the Scotsman, did he pull an Obi-Wan Kenobi? Michelle, your thoughts. Is the Scotsman a Force ghost? Yeah. Do you watch Star yeah. Wars, Michelle? I did. Okay, so you do understand what we're talking about. Yes, I do. Okay, good, because that would have been awkward. <laughs> How many people haven't seen Star Wars? I mean... A lot of people actually haven't really? seen Star Wars. I know. Okay. I know, it's sad, because like, I've i seen all three new Star Wars trailers that happened over the weekend of all the various <laughs> games and movies and shows, yet some people have never seen Star Wars. It's sad. It's truly sad. So, anywho, anywho. we agree... That the Scotsman is now a Force Ghost. He is chilling with Qui-Gon Jinn. And we're moving on. To did Ashi really talk to her mom, or was it just a vision? And well, if I was her, I would respond, if I am so weak, why am I the only one still alive? Though two more might still be alive. What do you think? What? Two more might still be alive? Okay, How is that the other two that just fell? <laughs> oh. That would make me really happy if they're not dead, but I don't know. I, I want Ashi to have to confront at least one of her yeah, sisters before she has be to eventually. Yeah, so interesting, right? She's gonna confront her mother eventually. I mean, come mm-hmm. on. We're kind of, like, on that track. Yeah. It'd be nice if she could confront one of her sisters first, though. I agree. Exactly. I think she was hallucinating her <coughs> her mom in the moon. Because the thing is, we don't know the mom's powers. We know Aku's powers. We know Aku yeah, could probably do I that. Mean, we don't know if the mom has that kind of ability. Plus, like, the purpose of that was really to just, like, get her to talk about what she's thinking out loud for the audience than, like, anything. So it just worked as a a device for that, I think, more than, like, oh, the mom's literally talking through the moon. She does that all the time. Like, that's an established thing of hers. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely... I'm enjoying the use of hallucinations as plot exposition. (laughs) Yeah, no, it actually works really well, right? It might be my new favorite trope, and I never want it to die. Like, I love this trope now. Yeah, I've enjoyed its usage in the show so far. Which, it's funny, because I think another show that is doing this right now, have you heard of the show Imaginary Mary? No, what is that? It is this woman who gets married to this guy who has two kids, and the uh, the stress of uh, starting a new family causes her childhood imaginary friend Mary, this cute little puffball, like truly an adorable little creature, to uh to resurge. And so it's this what? woman and her childhood imaginary friend making their way through life. It's the a, stress of like It's like a Alf cult-like. but with an imaginary childhood friend. I don't know anything about Alf except wasn't he like a creepy puppet? It's like a family sitcom with a cute little monster. He's it's creepy, though. He has, like, a weird nose. Alf is not creepy. We will have this discussion oh, yeah, on another day. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is. I will make you podcast on Cartoon All-Stars <laughs> no, to the won't. Rescue, and no, you will have will to deal not. with animated Alf That's telling kids not to not do true. drugs. Don't mess with me, Michelle. Justin, you've already been messed with, man. <laughs> We're not touching that. <laughs> I have the power. We are watching Cartoon All-Stars <laughs> to the Rescue, so oh, kids no, don't do not. drugs. It's- I will I will put it on the podcast schedule. Do not tempt me. Because I will. 
I will do well, it. How did you get so power hungry, Justin? When, like, three weeks away from you, and look at you now. Ah-ha, this will ah-ha, ah-ha. <laughs> we got enough track. So moving <laughs> on, uh, next question from our from frequent commenter, Steve. Is it ironic Ashi was able to survive the torture because of her childhood, so in a way it is thanks to her mother? Uh, I think it's just I mean, tragic more than anything. Yeah, it's tragic, and I mean, if she hadn't been raised that way, she probably wouldn't have ended up there anyway, so I don't know Fair. if it's really to the mom. Fair. It's circumstantial. It's like, yeah, because of my mom, I can escape torture. However, I wouldn't have had to be tortured if it wasn't for my mother. Exactly. So... Yeah, it's just tragic. And then finally, though, I do think Ashi turned a little too quick, but that is what you have to do with a short 10-episode story, I guess. That's what I would also occur to me after I said that. They only have 10 episodes, so maybe they could only devote it to that long. Yeah, I mean, this is a 10-episode miniseries. We kind of got to hurry as far as plot goes. Which means, Michelle, you and I only have five more weeks together doing this wonderful (gasps) show. Oh no, that actually is really sad. They should make more just for us to continue this exactly. legacy. Exactly. <laughs> or at least, you know, we'll do something else. We gotta, we can't let, we can't let the dream die out. I wonder what other kind of show we could do. I don't know. Um, peep, cartoon all stars to the rescue? No, 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 no. I meant a good show that people will you want. You meant a current good on. show that's not a drug PSA. <laughs> yes, exactly. Ah, uh, see, you had to make that clear. I don't understand the difference sometimes. I'm telling you, we should do a whole series on drug PSA episodes. Like, no. I think that would be... What do you have against 80s drug PSAs? That's awful, and the, uh, the 80s and drug stuff is, like, literally the worst time ever, Justin. We're thankful we weren't alive for that. Quick, but, like, quick it was side nice story. I, I grew up on a pup named Scooby-Doo, and I wanted to show it to my brother. So I picked a random episode. And keep in mind, my brother is seven. I just <laughs> so happened one? to pick the drug PSA episode. Oh my god. Where the whole episode is about them dr- uh, busting a drug smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother's kind of oh looking. My and my brother's watching the episode. He, <laughs> yeah, he has this, no clue what's happening. It's great, Justin. Thanks. No, yeah. no. He enjoyed it because he doesn't know what drugs are yet. And he's just like, oh, Are's Scooby's a drug? puppy. Oh my god. Oh, man. He's, he's like, Scooby-Doo's a puppy. This is great. And I'm thinking, this is going to come back to bite me in the butt somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I he wouldn't live to that. He's going to be, like, playing with his toys and be like, give me all your drugs. <laughs> and I'm going to somehow end up in trouble with my mother. Like, this is going to happen. So drug see- PSAs are great. So that is the end of the email, Michelle. Wow. We went in so many directions with one email. So speaking of segues, Michelle, what do you want to talk about next on this episode? Um, should we talk about like how Ashi's perception of Aku changed over the course of the episode? Because that was pretty significant. It was, and I think yeah. we saw a bit of this last episode with Ashi's little rant of Aku is the greatest creator. He is the master and lord of all humanity. And then we got it a bit toned down in this episode where all she's just like, didn't Aku create the stars? Yeah, I really liked, like, that was, like, a good sequence, I that thought. Was, and it, it shows just how indoctrinated these people are, that <laughs> the embodiment of evil to them is God. And I, I, I don't want to get into, like, religious themes unless this show takes us down that route, but it might. I think this episode's probably the most we're going to get of it. But... Here's a person who is indoctrinated from birth to believe something that's completely wrong. Yeah. And it's it's powerful stuff. It was a good moment for um Jack too, because like he's like so surprised since she asked that he's like, What? Like, no, that's crazy. He literally he's does like, like a double take like you're yeah. kidding. But like he I think for him that also helps him understand a little more just like just how much like it's it's a hard thing for her to unlearn because it's not just like she's just there's so many aspects to like what she thinks Aku is that are completely different for him. Exactly. So, yeah, I, that's why that's why I like that segment so much because it was like really good to see both of their perspectives in a really good way. I also enjoyed seeing Jack's um, Jack's telling of the stars because it was yeah the star story was really cool. It was a view kind of into his childhood. You know, he said mm-hmm. it was a story his mother told him, and it's rare that we get to see 
Because in the first four seasons, Jack was very stoic, and in this season, we see him very broken. And so we haven't gotten a chance to explore this side of Jack a whole lot. We get it every now and again. Yeah, we get this kind of human side of him, this very Mm. empathetic child. And I think that was really needed to cement to people who maybe are just starting the show why they should care about Jack as a person and not just as a protagonist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I guess the flashback, similarly. I'm yeah, a couple that of- too. Yeah. This- and actually was really into that story. Like, you could oh, kind yeah, of get a sense it. of, like, childhood wonder that she probably missed out on her entire, like, childhood <laughs> um, hearing the story. So I really liked that, too. Oh, she she loved it. It was, yeah. it was a good moment. So, enough of the happy fun times, yeah, Michelle. The Horned Knight. <laughs> what the hell? Is that his official name? Um, no, that is just what I've been calling him. The Horned Knight. Yeah, Wiki's calling him the mysterious armored figure, which isn't much more descriptive than the Horned it's, Knight. It's about so. the same. So, it, I guess the big... Because this is the first of the flashback. Not even, This is the first hallucination where I'm truly, like, I no longer know if this is a hallucination. Is real or not? Yeah. Because <clears throat> I thought I it was a hallucination that. until, like, Jack walked through and he was there. Which, that was a beautiful scene. Of Jack mm-hmm, walking mm-hmm. off with the uh, the mysterious armored figure. We don't really... Yeah, you see him do it for, like, a hot sec, and then he's, like, gone. But, but uh, I don't know. No, oh, I mean, because, like, whenever he shows up, he's always, like, super shadowy, and there's, like, all this, like, green fog around him. So I, it makes it really feel like he's not actually there. Or if he is, he's, like, a spirit or something. He's not, like, human. See, here's what was I don't know. so, so good about this just, scene. Yeah. Was when he showed up, the first thing we saw was the green. And I mm-hmm. thought the green at first was Jack, like, getting sick. Like, he's turning green, he's sick, He's he <laughs> thinks he's murdered all these children, he's going to throw up, like, he's literally sick. And then they cut and show that the green is not, like, Jack, it's the night. And I thought that was such a cool cut. Like, I thought that was a very well-animated, well-plotted scene. Ah, I it didn't was, even think of that, so that's interesting. It was a very tense moment, I thought it was very good. Did did you think that they were actually dead? Did you did you buy into it? Uh, I thought there was a chance. I mean, after the other people all died, I mean, what I thought I meant, I didn't think Jack ever thought he killed them. I thought he thought that like Ashy had accidentally killed them by turning it off or something, and it like didn't go right. Yeah. But he was very upset about them maybe being dead. But um, yeah, I thought there was at least a fifty percent chance they were actually dead, and I was like, "Oh, that's sad." <laughs> As he walked off, I'm looking at the pile of what I still believe yeah. to be dead children bodies, yeah. and I'm like, "A, holy crap, Gendy, calm down!" And B, it's Anakin. He he killed younglings. Oh my god! Like, that was the oh, all man, I could think. Part of the movie. <laughs> it's such a bad. Uh, that's the kind of Star Wars we should never talk about. What, the original the trilogy? Prequels. Or the prequels? The prequels. Me says Jar Jar Binks? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, um, why do people listen to this show? <laughs> this show? This show's not the same as the prequels, man. <laughs> One throwaway line is excusable, I think, in the grand scheme of things. What, what do you mean? Oh, like, one Jar Jar line is, like, acceptable. But like, okay, I see if this what suddenly you mean. became the Jar Jar podcast, we'd really have a problem. Yeah. The Jar Jar cast. No, no, don't think about it. <laughs> Justin, no. <laughs> Justin, down. No, no, sit. Bad. Bad. <laughs> well, let me ask you, where do you think the show's going from here? Without reading the description of the next episode, what do you think's going to happen? I think that we're going to get a good Zuko Alone esque episode. Split in half. We're either getting oh half Zuko, Ashy Zuko, half Jack Zuko. We're either getting that, or we're just getting Ashy for like an entire episode, and then she finds Jack at the end, or the reverse. It's it's uh-huh. either going to be Jack alone, Ashy alone, or both alone parallel. 
Do you think we're going to see the Scotsman ghost again next episode? I think he's coming back in episode seven. I don't think we're getting oh, him right away. Episode seven. I think okay. we're going to take an episode, like a really heavy episode. And then after, because next episode is probably going to be super heavy. And then we can bring back the Scotsman ghost. Well, I have a question for you. I have an answer for you. This is a half-serious question. So what do you think of the people who are currently shipping Jack and Ashi? uh, Are there people shipping Jack and Ashi? Yeah, there are. I'm not in the fandom for this show. I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm not either, but I've seen things. I've turned in the Dylan. (laughs) Ah. Um, I've gone from the, the shipping trash of the podcast to the old guy that doesn't know what's happening anymore in the fandom. Oh, that is Dylan. (laughs) I don't know if I'm... uh, I haven't thought about it. I think... Mm -hmm. I I don't like... My my, my thing with shipping them is I think the only reason people are shipping them is they want there to be a couple. Uh Uh-huh. They're like, two characters, let's ship them. They're standing next to each other. Instead of letting these two characters exist on their own laurels, it, it, they're trying to, it, here's the thing. If we get a romance in this show, it will be rushed, it will be bad, it will not be what you want, because we have five episodes. That is not enough time to build what this show needs for a romance if they were to do that, because this show has been taking itself very seriously on aspects of Jack and Ashi. Aku, <laughs> you know, Aku could fall in love with Aku next episode for all we know. <laughs> Aku could end up on a... <laughs> Aku next episode could truly end up on The Bachelor where all 20 women are, are Aku. Aku. Oh my god, I want to watch that! And that would be would normal for that. this show because that's what they've set yeah. up is that mm-hmm. its side characters are super silly. Aku, mm-hmm. um, Scarmoose, Scotsman, they're all silly. Ashi and Jack aren't. They need to be taken seriously. They need to be treated seriously. And if they were to do a romance, it needs more than five episodes. And I don't, I don't think they can do it properly. I think that's a really good reason for why that shouldn't be a ship. You want to know my reason why it shouldn't be a ship? What is your reason? Sam, the age difference is just like too much, man. Like Jack is like, like a 70. teenager, and he's like old. He's like so well, freaking old. Well, here's yeah. the thing: Jack doesn't quote unquote. Age. But like even like the maturity difference is like he's been through a lot. Honestly, more. it's more wanna... of a father daughter uh, relation. From yeah, what... it feels like a father daughter, like a mentor, you know, trainee kind of. It does not. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a a pure thing exactly. Skip thirty seconds ahead if you don't want spoilers for Bioshock Infinite. This feels <laughs> like when people yeah. ship Elizabeth and Booker. Because every time I see someone shipping Elizabeth and Booker, I'm like, have you finished the game? And if their response is no, my response is don't write any fan fiction until you finish the game. It's and the end of the game. if they Are have they... finished the game, I'm like, dude, because at the end of the game, they reveal Elizabeth as Booker's daughter. Oh. And I'm like, you need to calm down for a second. Because are they cute? Yes. Once you realize it's his daughter, you, you, you got to walk that back a bit. Yeah, Jack could be her, like, grandpa, honestly, so... Doesn't matter he's an age, he's still, like, hella old. No, so. there's no more Bioshock yeah. Infinite spoilers, people who skipped ahead 30 seconds on the podcast on iTunes, don't worry. It's over now. So, yeah, I don't want yeah. Jack and Ashi. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't really I don't. either. <laughs> At all. I think, I think if we get Jack and Ashi, we'll have to have a discussion on forced heterosexual couples in animation again, and I don't yeah. want to have to have this discussion again. I honestly, I like, I honestly don't think they're gonna do it with this show. They better I don't, not. I think it would have, it, w- it would be hella forced, and I don't think they would think that was a good idea. Plus, like, yeah. Gendy yeah. Is I so... really don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, the thing is, I love Gendy Tartakovsky. The best relationship I think he's ever done was in Symbionic Titan with, uh, Kimmy and Otto, yet. Yes. Even him, who made Uh-oh. one of the most... They get together? It was... We got a really... Uh, have you seen that the the infamous no. scene from Symbionic Titan? I haven't seen any of uh, Shake it... Uh, what is it? Shake it, bake it, booty quake it? I've heard of that, though. That's weird. Gendy I made that. that I've heard of it. Okay. Gendy made that happen. And I don't even think he would do this. That's the okay. thing. Is I think he prides himself too much on making 
quality love storylines that he would not touch this with a 10-foot pole. Okay. Because yeah, but should give us hope then. Right now, his quality bar for romances is super high. Between Symbionic Titan and the Hotel Transylvania movies, he's uh... yet to screw up a relationship. He He can't screw this one up. Okay, so we're just gonna believe that nothing weird's gonna happen. We're gonna chalk that up to the nope yeah. pile. Good, yeah, put it in the nope pile. I like How, that idea. I'm as much as I don't <laughs> want it to happen. If I don't, it I don't, does, I honestly don't think it's gonna happen. There's no way. Like honestly, does, I don't think there's any way they're gonna get that in there if, in like a few episodes. I don't think we're gonna get a true relationship. Do you think we're gonna get a hookup? No, I think we're gonna get a a cool like um like friendship question mark something like that. You know, we're they're in gonna the era they're, they're of Batman the Killing each Joke, other, and they're gonna help each other out. We're gonna get it like a Katara Zuko esque kind of thing. I I'm think. very scared that they're gonna take because think about it. They've used the TV fourteen rating so far for yeah. Just the Blood. Are they gonna use it for no! the sexual content they're allowed? That- because in America, in America, you can have, like, hella violence and torture and be like, oh, well, that's okay. But the minute you any kind of sexy stuff, they freak out. In a 14 so ship, yeah, it's airing on no Adult way. Swim. There's, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Do you know what it's else actually, aired on Adult Swim? Stuff is treated so differently from Aqua Teen Hunger stuff. Force, where they flew <laughs> on a spaceship made of penises. That's different, though. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I think people treat penises more lightly than like vaginas. I don't know, man. I don't think that's any a whole of that's separate discussion. Which I'd show. love to do a podcast with you on sexism <laughs> in animation. Oh, God, <laughs> Justin, are you ready for that? Yes, I'm a gender studies minor and a communication major and a pop culture <laughs> minor. It's Great. all I've been trained for. Oh boy! All right, we can see. So <laughs> we we're off topic. Good. Do you have any final thoughts on this episode? Um, I liked it. <laughs> it was it was good. It wasn't my favorite, but it was a good episode. It was a good episode. I like the direction the show is going. I'm um, excited. Yeah, I'm excited for what's to come. We're halfway there. That's that's, that's crazy, but it's that's true. Crazy. Okay, so any any upcoming things you want to go ahead and plug, Michelle, before we wrap this up? I don't know what's happening. Oh, I know Steven Universe is coming back at uh, some point next month. Another bomb's happening, I think, um, right? I believe. Yeah. Um, there was one thing I didn't want to talk about real, real quick. It's not Samurai Jack related. It is Cartoon Network related. What is it? Um, do you remember the old show, Curse the Cowardly Dog? <gasps> yes! Did you hear what happened? No. It's, it's, it's not coming back. Oh. Um, the actor that Oh, played... no, someone died? The Someone actor died. that played Eustace, Arthur Anderson, passed away at 93. Oh, no! Oh, that's a nice, ripe old age, though. It is. So that's kind of good. Yeah. So I figured while we were here, we'd give a... Uh-huh. Just wanted to say thank you so much, Arthur Anderson, for giving us yeah. a wonderful character. One of the that's best Cartoon awesome. Network catchphrases. Stupid dog. <laughs> Stupid yes. dog! The way he says it's just so amazing. He's a fun character. Eustis was just something special. There's never been a character like him. There never will be. And so I just wanted there to make sure. There are freaky old man characters, but like he's like the best <laughs> of He them. is. I I just wanted to make sure that we did give a proper tribute. So Yeah, no, that was that was worthy of that is pun- That is what I, I wanted to say. So with that... I guess that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, for listening to our Samurai Jack coverage. You can find all the information for our podcast at OverlyAnimated.com. You can support us via Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Thank you to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, John, a.k.a. Johnny Bravo. Oh, Johnny Bravo. Yay! (laughs) And thanks, as always... To our Patreon executive producers, John, Ryan, Steve, and Alex. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Uh, that's it for us. Upcoming, I know we've got a lot of roundtables we're doing. Dylan and I have recorded a White Diamond Speculation Steven Universe roundtable. Oh, did you? We have another Fantasy Survivor coming up. We have 
a lot of top fives that I will be recording tomorrow as we record this, so I don't know when those are coming out. Be on the lookout for those. Those are going to be fun. A lot of guest hosts you're going to get to hear soon. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great time. Thank you, as always, for listening, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.